What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we've got the summary video of the $400 PC build of 2024 that we first went out in parts hunter for and then built in a live stream. I definitely have my doubts seeing that it being a pretty hard thing to do a custom PC build for just only $400 but as you guys can see we managed to make that happen and it will perform just as well as it looks. And speaking of building PCs and if you're looking to save some money while doing so yourself then I've got a video sponsor here that'll help you do just that. Let's go. Did you just finish building your brand new gaming PC and you're trying to finish off the build by installing and activating Windows, but you're finding yourself a little strapped for cash because you just bought all that nice new shiny hardware? Well then I've got you covered in today's video sponsor, SCD Key. As mentioned, head on over to scdkey.com, link in the description below, an online marketplace that specializes in keys to activate your copy of Windows. What you'll want to do is select to purchase a Windows 10 Pro key, click buy it now, and apply my promo code during checkout to take full advantage of a 25% discount they have going on right now for Valentine's Day. You can even use my promo code on Windows 11 or other Office product purchases. Next all you got to do is zip on over to your Windows activation screen, click change product key, and simply paste in the key you received digitally upon purchase. Click through the next activation menu screens and you are done. Now you have a fully licensed and activated copy of Windows on your new system. Remember guys, don't forget to use my promo code during checkout to save yourself some sweet cash during checkout to activate your Windows copy. Thank you again to SCD Keys for sponsoring today's video. And now back to our regular content. So guys, as mentioned, this was definitely quite a challenge. So let's just jump right in and talk about the parts. Starting with the motherboard, we've got the B450 MSI Pro Max from MSI. Now this actually was not my first choice of motherboard. If you go back and watch the parts hub video, I had full intentions of running my tried and true motherboard from Gigabyte. However, I had to make a sacrifice here and substitute for a fair bit cheaper board to make more room in my budget. The only real major feature this PC will be missing going forward with this board is just Wi-Fi. Aside from that, this board has everything we need to lay the foundation for a great budget build. So seeing that we're locked into the B450 platform as it is, let's discuss the CPU next, one that I've never really used before. And what we got here is a Ryzen 5 4500. This is an interesting CPU for sure. It's a six core 12 thread CPU that operates at about the same frequencies of a Ryzen 5 3600, but with reduced L2 and L3 cache. For a $400 1080p gaming system, I think this is plenty fine in my opinion. However, it's not a powerhouse CPU, but has the cores and frequency to get the job done. This is definitely an area that you can consider upgrading in the future for a marginal investment. But the greatest thing to mention, because we are operating on a strict budget, here is the price of that CPU coming in at $87, also including a cooler and being brand new. It was a no brainer. All right, now moving on into RAM and this being an area that's been very nice for budget builders such as myself and came in very clutch when it comes to building a $400 gaming PC. And we've got a 16 gig kit here from Lexar for only $37. This will be the first time I ever use this RAM kit. I think it looks pretty good. It matches the aesthetic well of the PC, but most importantly, it's clocked at 3600 megahertz or mega transfers CAS latency 18. This should work plenty well for the Ryzen 5 4500, which will be thirsty for some high frequency DDR4 memory. Next on to storage, which is becoming a bit of a drama point for us budget PC builders. More on that in just a second. However, I did manage to find this 512 gig drive for just $33. Yes, unfortunately, we might be looking at more of a long-term or even permanent price hike when it comes to SSDs. The major manufacturers of NAND flash memory, Samsung, SK Hynix, and Micron have all raised their prices beginning back in late 2023. So keep in mind, yes, we will be seeing some price hikes. There still are some affordable options that you can snipe, kind of like this TimeTech 512 gig drive. Now there's definitely nothing to write home about this drive. I was simply just trying to honestly meet only my price to meet my budget. As much as I would have loved to put a one terabyte drive in the system, because of the rising prices of SSDs, I was forced to go with a budget 512 gig drive. Also an area that can always be expanded upon later in the future if the prices stay reasonable. Uh, GPUs, always the elephant in the room topic when it comes to budget building, especially at this price range of only $400. However, I did find a card that I think is a pretty good pairing with this system in total, and I got so on the cheap and did not break the budget. So here we have a bit of an older card at this point, but still a great one. The GTX 1070 from EVGA. Rip EVGA. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into This card though is more than capable of playing 1080p titles at good frame rates. Very fitting of this tight budget, I think. Sure, would I have loved to get more of a card for my budget? We all do, right? But this is what I had to make work. And only for $90 off eBay, I consider this a pretty good buy for what we need here. 
Coming towards the end of the part list here, but not quite at the end, we've got the power supply, and I was a little worried I would have had to result to something that I really didn't want to do. Luckily for me, we didn't have to do that. And what I mean by that is this PSU from Apivia, a tier C rated power supply for just $52. The 600 watt gold prestige model to be exact. But the best part I can say about this PSU is it's affordable and on the tier C list. And being a reliable power supply with 600 watts to feed our system, we have more than enough to power the system and offer some good headroom for any kind of future upgrades. So at this point, my budget is nearly spent and I don't have a whole lot to work with to make a $400 build work. And I thought for sure, especially in the parts up video, if you go back and watch that, that I would have to scale back my investment on either the CPU, motherboard, or something to make any kind of case work. Luckily for me, I managed to find a pretty darn good one and a pretty darn good price. So here we have the Eclipse G300A from Fantex. I'm pretty partial to Fantex cases, so this one already had my interest perked. Coming in at just $40, the price being the primary deciding factor, I found exactly what I needed. However, I wasn't necessarily out of the woods just because I got out by making my budget. This case does come with some caveats. And what I mean by that is I was expecting the rear RGB fan to just work out of the box with a simple case control, etc. But turns out it requires a 5 volt ARGB connection to either a motherboard or a controller to really work at all. Being that I was targeting a $400 budget, I had nothing left to contribute to make this work. However, for sake of completion and resale value for myself, I did go ahead and purchase some extra fans from ID Cooling, which I've placed up front here for intake and wired up to a fan control that comes with that fan kit right out of the box. So keep in mind, these three fans are an extra in terms of the build. It doesn't really break the build budget too much. It was an extra $25. However, as you can see, I think it really completes the build and gives us the full fan control now that we are able to control the rear Fantech fan and the ID cooling, which really actually mesh well together in total. So all in all, this complete package, if you ignore the front fans that I spent an extra $25 on, comes in at $404.67. Yes, it did break the budget by just a few extra dollars, but I did mention in the parts hunt video, I wanted to upgrade the RAM just a little bit more for just a few more dollars. So if I stuck with my original slower speed RAM, which wouldn't have been as good for this build, it would have came in around $400. Anywho, I think that gives you a good idea of all the parts and what I paid for them and where I got them from. Let's see now how well this $400 PC can perform.
So there we have it guys, a $400 custom build that you can one, build from the ground up, not use any OEM parts or anything like that, but a full custom build, doable in early 2024. And I'm happy to say it performs just as well as it looks. But if you're looking for other possible templated ideas in other budget ranges, well then I've got a few videos on screen that you guys can check out to get yourself some ideas. Thanks for tuning into this one though. I appreciate your time and I will catch you in the next one.